Ellis continued to look for a band to join. The Cotton Carnival is a huge uh, annual springtime event in Memphis. He and I uh, went on a date and ran into Ronald uh, Smith, who played with Eddie Bond. And, and, Who's uh, Ronald Smith? Uh, yeah, and uh, Ronald shares with Elvis uh, that there is an opening in the band and suggests he should come out and audition. Uh, we were so excited. A few days later, I accompanied Elvis to the Hi Hat Club for him to audition for Eddie Bond, uh, who made the Starling Area. You need to keep driving your truck. <laughs> Elvis was, he was a threat. Uh, that, that's really the essence. Go ahead, punk. Make my day. And watch Glow Trotting with Trey. Because Clint Eastwood said so. <laughs> I'm pausing Cry Macho because I wanted to tell you guys this. Today is my 100th episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. And I wanted today's episode to be special. I enjoyed this story when I learned about it. And I said, man, this, this is going to be a big episode. So this is the 100th episode. You're going to learn a story from a guy. The guy that you saw at the top of the video, Mr. Ronald Smith, who was friends with Elvis who, back in 1953, played in a band with Eddie Bund. Eddie Bund would go on to be a rockabilly legend in his own right. But on this night in 53, Runny invited Elvis and Dixie down to the Hi-Hat Club on South 3rd in Memphis, Tennessee to get Elvis up on the stage to perform a few songs in front of Eddie Bund because Mr. Bund was were looking for new singers to play the Hi-Hat Club and across the street place called Red's Place. Elvis, what this story tells me was Elvis was not an overnight sensation like you think. A whole year and a half before he goes to Memphis Recording Service, Sun Studios as you know, and records That's All Right Mama with Sam Phillips, Elvis was trying to be a singer. He was auditioning to be in a band and he was at the Hi-Hat Club on South 3rd in Memphis with Ronald Smith who is going to share the story today on my 100th episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. So if you enjoyed this episode today, comment below and please like it for me. That's all I ask. So YouTube will share it to all Elvis fans. That's why I do these videos for all Elvis fans to learn the true, true stories of Elvis Presley. This is not a cartoon version of Elvis. This is not Elvis the superhero. This is Elvis Presley, the man trying to become that legend. And this proves he was not an overnight sensation, like I said. He was like me, and he was like you, whoever you are going after your dreams. He was trying and taking every opportunity he got. So you're gonna hear, learn a story from the guy that actually was there with him and was the one that invited him there. Plus, Mr. Smith, at the end of the episode, he's gonna well, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you that. You're going to have to watch it to the end to see because you don't want to miss it because he and I, we, uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you. Go ahead and get your popcorn ready. Get your Coke ready. Let's let Mr. Smith take it away on today's 100th episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Thanks for watching. You need to keep driving. <laughs> Elvis was, he was a threat. Uh, that, that's really the essence. But he was, uh, El, uh, Eddie had gotten out of the Navy, and uh, that's a story how I got hooked up with him at 14, you know, and was playing, playing joints and uh, playing down there at the high end. But uh, uh, Elvis and I was uptown at the Cotton Carnival, and uh, was, they had some bands in from Texas and uh, Majorettes. That's who we was hit, you know. Taking those girls out. Yeah, and all that. You know, let's, let's see how this band looks. You know, we're standing over just up from uh, uh, Court Square there. And 
have people lined up on both sides because it's a cotton carnival and everybody's uptown. It's Saturday morning and uh, so uh, anyway, uh, I s spent all the money I had, you know, and it was uh, I think Friday. No, it's Saturday. Saturday morning, yeah. And uh, so um, I spent the money that I had from playing. And uh, anyway, and so I borrowed 50 cents uh, from him. He, you know, he always had change in his pocket. Never wore Levi's or anything like that. And uh, um, and anyway, he he's. He had a job. It was with uh, Memphis Tool and Die, and, and it was a little panel truck, and uh, uh, that he delivered tools and supplies. He had to have a badge, and I uh, ended up with a badge and uh, giving it to some book writer uh, out in Fremont. I, I got stolen from him. That's that, that's I took a picture of it. But anyhow. Uh, uh, we so fit cents, and I knew that I'd get paid uh, again that night, you know, uh, from down at I had. So I said, "Won't you go by and get Dixie and and uh, meet me down there, you know?" And uh, we need a we need a singer because Eddie sings country, and uh, he's we got a good band. Uh, and I explained the band. Uh, they were uh, the drummer uh, went to uh, Southwestern, which is Rhodes now, and and the uh, clarinet and saxophone player he uh, uh, he goes out at Memphis State. The piano player is a good piano player, and uh, Aubrey and. Uh, I said, and what we do is just play instrumentals, and uh, they don't want him to sing because Tommy and Mary uh, teach up town at Arthur Murray's and had a uh, there on Main Street, uh, one of one of those buildings I used to know, but I hadn't been down Main Street. But anyhow, they had a the whole top. This whole floor was a dance studio. All their students, uh, uh, and they have a supper club, and we down here on third. And uh, so, uh, get Dixie and come on down. I told him where it was, and uh, well, when I got there with my guitar and amp going in, they were sitting there at the table, and. I could tell uh, Elvis was real impressed with the place because, uh, uh, you know, a lot of rural people, if they'd come to Memphis, they wouldn't even go in there because it, it has carpet and everything, you know, so uh, kind of, a, you know, what I'm trying to say. It, it was really nice at a stage. So finally, uh, Elvis, finally, I mean, uh, they sat there and uh, uh, listened to what we was playing and things, and uh, uh, Dino, the, uh, the saxophone player and clarinet player, uh, he'd alternate on them, and uh, played a lot of... Uh, Artie Shaw and, and uh, uh, Benny Goodman stuff on the clarinet and saxophone would play a lot of uh, Bob Crosby stuff, you know, but we didn't have any vocals, you know, because they didn't want, and Eddie sat on the stage and he was the MC. And he'd, uh, think of things to say in between songs and things like that and uh, but it, anyway and I remember you know I played a, Ralph Martieri was a big hit Caravan and, and uh, uh, Jealousy uh, had another uh, Jezebel and all this kind of thing and uh, anyway 
That was the uh, songs you were playing. Yeah, yeah uh -huh, just instrumentals. So uh, finally, about the second set, well, I, I told Eddie, I said, Eddie, get, get on you know, sing something and just uh, listen, you know, because we needed a singer. And uh, I mean, Eddie and I was real, uh, we got along fine. He'd just gotten out of the Navy, but. Well, anyhow, so uh, Elvis come up, sang uh, some things like over at Riverside Park, just entertaining these three or four girls, you know, and uh, they were popular songs at the time, and uh, so, uh, which later, uh, up at RCA, he had recorded them. But anyway, so uh, Eddie, uh, we took the break. Eddie said, uh, "Come on." Well, said, "I've talked to you." Well, I went to the door uh, out of the place with him, and uh, uh, they set out in uh, Eddie's. It wasn't his car, it was his daddy's car, it was uh, Buick. And uh, so they sat in there and talked. And um, then they come out, you know, it took a whole break. And uh, so, and, uh, I, I'm sure I went over to Dixie's table every now and then, you know, and, and talk, talk with her, but went to the door. So I was there when they got out of the car and uh, uh, I said, well, how'd it go, you know, and Alan, he said, nah. I said, across the street over there was a trolley car that had been converted, which a lot of places did, into a uh, dining car for the railroad crew, which was non connor rail yards under the viaduct, and uh, morning uh, people going to work, you know, and and uh, Redhead, which was popular in a lot of restaurants, had uh, uh, German uh, soldiers, souvenirs. He had been over in Europe like everybody, it seems like, and uh, uh, postcards and uh, uh, daggers that he had taken off of uh, or got anyway. And uh, so they were on the back wall and Elvis wanted to put, I mean, Eddie wanted to put Elvis over there in Red's place and, uh, he'd, and uh, to play, so he'd have two bands, see, and uh, so uh, Elvis come in and, and he said, no, he wants me to play over there at Red's place, he said, and I, I want to play here, he said, I ain't playing over there, you know, I said, well, you said, I'll quit and we'll go over there and play. And I, he said, no, this is where I want to play, you know. So anyhow, uh, after that, we went back to play and he and Dexie left, you know, but that was the idea. And I didn't get to pay him back my 50 cents that I owed him till uh, years later. You did finally uh, pay Elvis back the 50 cents? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. but I owed him a dollar then because I was uptown at, at night and uh, uh, he, uh, at this time that night, he'd come by, he'd, he was doing good then in uh, his uh, new Cadillac he had. And he said, come on, so we'll, we'll go riding around. Well, we went uh, just up and down Main Street and that kind of a thing at night. And uh, they still had traffic cops then. And I remember one morning uh, we picked up one and uh, uh, down yeah, around uh, Goldsmith's department store. He was a traffic cop there and uh, uh, he seemed to know one another and, and he said uh, um, that cop was sitting over here by the door and I was sitting in the middle and uh, uh, it had the top up at this time and he said uh, you uh, 
Has anybody ever run over your toes? And I mean, I, you know, we kind of talk that way. And cop said, Hell yeah. He said, uh, Something other than you go telling stories. Well, you know, uh, Elvis really wasn't interested whether he got his toes run over or not. But I mean, we weren't, you know. And uh, uh, But anyhow, uh, and come back down Main Street and let him out at his post, you know, and uh, so I'd, I'd see that cop a lot, you know, and wave at him walking up and down Main Street, going somewhere to a music store, and uh, uh, Memphis had uh, two or three good music stores in that era. There's a chance if Dixie and Elvis didn't run into you at the cop carnival that earlier that day that he would not have been there. Of course, that. Uh, well, that, that, that that's fine. Uh, I mean the way she's phrased it because uh, I don't remember uh, between you and I. But uh, anyway, I, but I I know it, me and Elvis there when we was uh, seeing which one of the. Majorettes was prettier than the next group that came, you know, and and trying to get their attention and you know, yeah, and things like that. And we did one little girl from uh, Majorette from Texas, you know, and she uh, we caught her eye and she caught ours and she smiled and done what majorettes do, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Uh -huh. So how did uh, that, that night, if you can remember that night, did Elvis yeah. do a good job yeah. on stage? Oh, yeah, the, I, I remember asking uh, these uh, jazz wannabes, you know, and they, they were good, uh, but uh, uh, Mark Waters, you know, and he was uh, typical Typical, cynical. Uh, at, at that age, yeah, at, at that time. At that age, yeah. Uh huh. And uh, I think he was second, a uh, sophomore out at Southwestern then, and used to try to talk me into going to college. And I, I told him, "No, man. I, you know, all I want to do is play guitar. You know, and uh, and uh, another story that I was thinking about, uh, but uh, he liked him. I asked him, you know, and I asked uh, Dino, and uh, Dino said, yeah, I, I said, I thought he sounded good to me, you know, said, uh, uh, because he was singing pop songs because it kind of called for it, Elvis was. And this, this was where the building was, right there. Right there was right the Hi-Hat Club. Hi-Hat Supper Club. Uh -huh. and, 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 and Mary and Tom, uh, I can't think of their last names right now, they lived up above me on McLemore and uh, they taught up at Arthur Murray and they bought uh, this club, fixed it up, and uh, to have their dance studio at Arthur Murray's come to their supper club on the weekends and uh, we played off the door and uh, uh, we did instrumentals and uh, I can even tell you well anyway you pulled in off uh, the highway here into that where we're sitting here was uh, a little dining car for railroad workers here from non uh called Red's Place. And uh, uh, maybe it was more to our right here, but right here was uh, called the Belmont Club. And it had been here before Hi-Hat Club had. And uh, had a good business over there, uh, Mary and uh, Tommy. and. Uh, uh, it uh, was where uh, Elvis wanted to play, but uh, Eddie Bond wanted to have two bands, the long or short of it was, and put him over at Red's place. I don't know why he didn't uh, 
over here at the Belmont because uh, I had played here once years later and uh, but uh, anyway uh, he didn't and Elvis didn't want to play over in Red's place uh, which was just a dining trolley car and uh, that turned into a diner <laughs> which uh, had a lot of those in uh, after the war and uh, uh, the Dakotas, they still uh, have some up there, but uh, uh, he, uh, anyway, the and fellow he, Red, uh, he was, uh, uh, another, I mean, they were all over the place, uh, World War II veterans, you know, he'd, he'd been in combat over in Europe, but... Uh, and you're saying Red's place was right over here in this area? Uh -huh. uh, just, just a little to my right here. Yeah, and, you, and but of course this, this has been built up. It's uh -huh. it was not it, this no, high. No, it was not this high, and uh, uh, the uh, it it was the Belmont was set back just a little, um, and uh, these telephone poles weren't where they. Oh well, maybe, maybe they were. Yeah, they're old. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, may maybe they were in this place, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, they at the Belmont Club they set uh, in uh, part of his parking lot, and uh, if you didn't watch it, you'd uh, ruin your bumper back and back and out of Belmont Club's parking lot. Over here, uh, this had been uh, a wood house structure I'll call it and uh, wood uh, and it, it was good it was fixed up uh, real nice and uh, I believe from uh, at least 1951 till uh, 54 uh, early spring 54 I played there I played there at uh, the high hat at the high hat so how big was this building uh, Inside it, it, uh, it, it was large enough to. Uh, let's see how many people would it hold. The dance floor, uh, uh, maybe they had tables. When you come into the door along that row, uh, along the back row. Uh, the dance floor was in the middle. Then you had two sets of dinner tables back toward the kitchen, and they had a stage. And uh, I know Stanley Kessler was uh, my friend. Uh, well, he used uh, any anyway. Uh, Stanley and I was over at the Belmont in uh, uh, we. He was on break, and uh, uh, Stanley was engineer at uh, Pete Drake's studio up in Nashville when the Beatles came, and when uh, um, and Pete Drake didn't know who these people was, and I mean that's another funny story because we stood here talking about it, and. Uh, uh, and uh, Stanley had written some songs with Charlie Feathers uh, that Elvis done, and uh, uh, but uh, I forgot to remember, which uh, my sister-in-law uh, used to think was written about her, and it may may have been, but Stanley wrote a lot of the words. Uh, 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 Charlie. Feathers had the title, and uh, people used to laugh at Charlie, but I knew better. Charlie was uh, ahead of everybody, but anyhow, we uh, was talking about it. The Beatles had uh, asked uh, his Stanley's record company to, while we stood here and uh, was talking, uh, he was on break, and uh, about uh, they had asked him. He turned the Beatles down a contract recording uh, over here 
uh, because uh, Columbia, RCA, and everybody else had turned it down and, wow. and, uh, back then. But uh, we kind of laughed about it because they were, at that time, they had uh, made an entry in uh, American music, you know. <laughs> and uh, their first album was the hottest thing going at yeah. the time, and it was changing music. But um, again, over here, uh, after we quit, they had a good, uh, more uh, polished uh, band that come in. And uh, I don't know what the occasion was, but I just dropped in probably to see Mary and uh, uh, and Tommy and uh, and I went across the street because I knew Stanley was playing over here and so uh, anyway and uh, it, it was about a five-piece band and they uh, they had harmony and uh, it was more uh, in that era maybe like a uh, Las Vegas Lounge Band, was but well. uh, yeah. So what year did the Hi Hat probably shut down? Uh, well, like I said, I played here. I, it must have been spring '54, and uh, uh, '53 uh, or '54. So it was after that. I had moved uh, off of uh, out of South Memphis at that time and uh, bought a house over in Whitehaven in 57 mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, it, it maybe it was spring of 53 or 54 when but, you started playing it uh, when when quit uh when when i started was 51 i'm pretty sure it's just amazing to know that right here at the high hat you, know, you invited elvis yeah with like, his girlfriend yeah. with dixie and that night for dixie, elvis to audition uh, for the band yeah, and it. this is prior to elvis going to sun records and recording it, it that's all right mama yeah, so it. You're and pretty. Uh, you're pretty important to Elvis's music thing because oh, man. Well, you, I'm just saying you were helping him. You were going to help him get into a band because that's what his dream was, correct? Uh, well, well, I, I don't know about that. Uh, Elvis, uh, really, it, it was like me too, and I. I mean, I understood it well, and maybe that's anyway. Uh, he was. A few years older than me, but I was so street savvy more than he was, and uh, uh, at that time coming from South Memphis and uh, but uh, in Fort Pickering, but uh, every day was a new day. It, I mean, it was brand new. I, I don't know how else to describe that, but it. Uh, I, you know, uh, it, that, that was the way it was. Every day something new is going to happen. Uh, you know, it happens. I yeah, don't mean life is, it's going to happen. You yeah. know, but uh, when, uh, you know, you're still teenagers and, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's a good feeling. And But this is great to, to be right here and finally figure out yeah, because you know it's reported that, that the hi hat club was down that way a little ways, but it, it's not. It was no, uh, guys. It was over right here there. in front right of me. There. This oh. is Third Street, South Third, heading this way toward Tunica, this way to Memphis, That's and good. you can yeah. kind of see like a drive right here. So yeah. I'm gonna There's go back and do my one research. One there and one up over, here. Up there. Uh -huh. But a hi hat club, and then um, Mr. Smith said Elvis walked across third to Red's place that was over here. Over here, more in this area where we are uh -huh. at, you said it was the Bell. A Belmont. Belmont club, Supper Club. Supper Club. Uh -huh. And then back here behind us was a uh, little satellite station uh, that was like gas and water, and a fella that I'd gone to school with went to work, which a lot of guys did for the light, gas, and water. His name, last name was Osborne, 
and I saw him outside of that office there with uh, uh, with pole climbing gear on and such, yeah, yeah. you know. And uh, and then over here past that was, was uh, uh, Bearman's trailer courts. Courts, and, and there's an yeah. inn behind here right now. Yeah. So that, that could that, be the same courts. It, it is. Uh, it's the same way. Yeah, because there's courts back up in there, and I used to have to come down here from uh, uh, hanging out at Jack Ruby's ambulance service when I was a kid, and would sit around with some of them guys and play music uh, up there at night. And uh, none, of course, none of that was there, and uh, that's been built up with dirt and uh, it, it was lower and the Belmont was right about there. Yeah. That was Red's Diner. Red's Diner right here. Yeah. Red's Place, Red's Place, or Diner, Red's. Red's Diner. Yeah. It was just another trolley car diner and uh, uh, in Bearman's Fort where that end is. Yeah. You but see, this was the high end. Right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. So this is where you had Elvis audition, right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah, and I asked. And this is where you played. Him and Dick, Dixie to, uh, you know, uptown Cotton Car. And it was, it was a way to pay him back 50 cents that I owed him. Right. Because I had spent all my money. Elvis had all, we'd go down to Lansky's in those days, they would, uh, had overhead doors and, uh, and they had wood tables with clothes piled on uh -huh. top of them and, uh, the, all the boys, sons worked in there and, uh, Elvis and I went down there one time and, uh, he, one, one of the boys, I don't know which one it was, they was all black-headed then, and, uh, he said, Ah, what are you boys going to steal from us today? They always reached in his pocket. Uh, he, he never wore jeans that I saw him in. And uh, got some change. Said, here, go buy your mama a beer, you know. And things like that, just hitting back and forth, you yeah. know. And uh, so, but we didn't buy anything. And I think running around uptown that day, just messing around up at the corner of uh, Beal and... Uh, Main Street across from uh, the uh, Malco Theater there, there was a, uh, uh, it was kind of like a hawk shop, and uh, but upstairs they had other things upstairs, and he, he would have gone on all night, or I, I don't know. So Elvis that, sat there and Elvis. listened. He, Elvis sat there and listened. Yeah, the and, and had to, and I could, it was making me nervous, you <laughs> know, and so. Yeah, because you invited Elvis over to audition. I did, uh -huh. and because we needed a singer, and uh, uh, he would have been a good one. Oh, oh yeah, he would. <laughs> they, you know, they uh, they didn't hoop and holler. I mean, the band. Uh, yeah. They said, yeah, he's he singing yeah. all right. I mean, because he did. Think about it. Uh, he knew all the pop songs, knew all the songs, and the words to it. That means a lot, you know. And uh, already knew him, and uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't have a guitar with him or nothing like that. Just, uh, just sang it, you know. So, guys, how did you enjoy that episode of Glow Trotting with Trey? Amazing, right? Thank you, Mr. Smith, for sharing your story for all Elvis fans to learn about this time in your life with Elvis. Thank you for taking me to the location where Elvis was once upon a time in his life at the Hi Hat Club on South Third location that I guarantee you, you didn't know about. And guys, if you haven't already, don't double dribble. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey to stay updated with every new Elvis episode like today that I upload each Tuesday morning for you guys to learn about the real Elvis Presley and special episodes here and there. And if you're in Memphis, Tennessee, visit us at the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum at 3217 Lucible Road in Memphis only two miles, not even two miles, from Graceland at a place where Elvis trained karate and this famous picture of Elvis was captured inside our building. 
We have memorabilia, we have signatures, we have his history book, we have the iconic ambulance from August 16, 1977, and we tell the history on that. It's an incredible experience. If you enjoyed these episodes on Glow Trotting with Trey that I bring to you, if you enjoy the shows that the spa guy brings to you, you will enjoy. Now, you won't even enjoy. You will leave that place with a smile on your face because you're going to leave that place feeling like you know more about Elvis than you ever did before. Because we're a part of this thing. We're the ones that take you around on the tour as, as well as Joey Smith, who was Elvis's cousin, his actually cousin, is there to tell stories and to guide you around the Tiger Man. The Spa Guy is there to do it. Patrick Thompson is there to do it. Glow Trotting with Trey is there to do it when I'm in Memphis. Guys, come and visit us. We've put a lot of work, so sweat, tears, excitement into bringing this new experience for the real Elvis Presley. Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum, 3217 Lucible Road in Memphis, Tennessee. Somebody's calling me. Hold on for a second. I'll call her back later. Thanks for watching this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. I got to take a phone call. 100th episode. I appreciate you guys. Like it. Thanks for watching.